May have a couple more stragglers come in, but uh, it's time to begin. I don't want to keep you all all morning. So before we get started, if you would, if you bow with them. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you so very much, Lord, for this beautiful day you provided. And we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to discuss and to look into your word, Father. And I pray that each one here will be able to take away just a little bit from looking into your word that we'll be able to garner as much as we can from it, Father, to help us to understand a little better what you would have us do and how you would have us go about living our lives as servants of yours. We pray for understanding, Father. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for that ability to make proper application to our lives. We thank you so much, Father, for Jesus. We thank you for raising him that third day after that awful sacrifice that he had to make for us. And we pray, Father, that we'll remember that sacrifice each and every day as we go about making those decisions in our lives that affect our souls. We thank you for your word, Father, and for leaving it for us and preserving it for us and all the knowledge that's in it for our edification, Father. We thank you so much. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, so we... Okay, Lori's running a little late. She said she'll be here. Um, I appreciate you being here, first of all. appreciate Mark getting everything set up. Aaron helping me with all of this. So, what it you know why why have a discussion about teaching, right? Um, we we've all taught a little bit here and there, and my goodness, what is a what is a symposium anyway, right? I've heard that brought up several times. Symposium simply is a conference or a meeting about any particular topic, but. Why not just call it a class? Well, I've got a rather dry sense of humor and been married 30 plus years and my wife is extremely quick-witted. So when I had her looking over just the initial thoughts that I put together, she said, symposium? Really? I thought, hmm, might be on to something there. But uh, she, uh, she said, it's just a class. See, that sounds a little fancy. I was like, okay, symposium it is then. <laughs> because I knew we would uh, have to announce it several times and she'd get to listen to other people talk about the symposium that's coming up. So that's really that simple. That's all it is. But anyway, I just, you know, we, we changed the way that we put the classes together. We got the... the uh, levels of instruction separated and kind of organized a little bit. So we went through all that, but before we actually take over and talk about doing that, we uh, are beginning on April the 7th to go into those new quarters of <coughs> instruction. So I thought, you know what, uh, you know, why not just uh, let's talk about teaching before we begin and Aaron I do not have there we go thank you so you know we can learn a lot from one another about everything and not just about teaching but not just the Bible but you know we've all most of us in here have kids and teaching your kids and teaching adults teaching others period, you know, it's all very similar. So, you know, I, I hope that you come away after this with a little bit more comfort about teaching, and I encourage you to get as involved in it as you can. But I can tell you what it's not. You're not going to come away from here with that magic pill that you can take and all of a sudden be able to teach and have 100% comfort and just be 
all inclusive with your knowledge. That, that's not what this is. This is just a way of going over, you know, what we can do as Bible teachers, because I don't feel like there's anything more important that we do than sharing God's word with others. And whether or not you're teaching your neighbor or you're instructing somebody that you know, your brother, your sister, whoever it may be, it's no different than being in an organized class and teaching class. There's certain things from each one of those that we can take away from it. And like I said, we learn from one another. Um, we're going to talk about the basic principles. Uh, and then we'll end with going back over our year-to-year -year plan here, here at Eastside in particular and how we've got the classes broke down and what we can expect moving forward. So why teach a Bible class? You know, God could have chosen any method possible to spread His Word. I mean, He could have just done anything, obviously. But, you know, God chose us to go about spreading His Word. Not preachers, not, you know, different types of church, churches with different methods. He chose us as individuals to spread His Word. Now, there's many different ways we can go about doing that. We can live our lives a certain manner that sends a message to others and gives by that example. But in particular, we are instructed to spread the gospel. And teaching a Bible class is one of the better ways that you can uh, grow as a Christian and help you to spread that gospel, not just with those sitting in class, but with everyone that you come across. <clears throat> You know, we must spread it in every way we can. So what, what are you going to walk away from this particular class? It's just the fact that teaching a Bible class, you know, we, we tend to get kind of worked up, I believe. And we get a little nervous about teaching the Bible class. And it's good that we do that, I think, because we want to ensure that we don't have any error to start with in the class that we teach. But then, you know, we can be our own uh, worst critic sometimes, I believe. And we put too much pressure on ourselves, I think, from time to time. And... You know, it's okay to feel certain ways, and we're going to talk about that. But I think if not you, then who? Who's going to teach you? <coughs> it, it, it's up to each one of us to teach and learn and grow. Uh, let see. I keep looking back because my eyes are not well enough to read what's in front of me. So... Uh, just bear with me a second. Yeah, I got up there. The goal is not to learn to to earn a degree in Christianity, so to speak. That's not that's not what a Bible class is about, and that's not the pursuit of what we're doing. The ability to teach the Bible class. It's okay to grow as you teach yourself, and you will come away from a Bible class. As a teacher, way stronger, I believe, as a Christian in general, than you were going in because of the amount of work and the amount of effort that it takes to put a Bible class together. The focus should always be on the Bible, not on the student, not on the knowledge of the teacher. The focus is on the Bible. Let, let God's Word do the work for you. <coughs> it's just that simple. 
it's not as difficult, like I said, as we try to put on ourselves with that pressure. It's like, well, I've never done this before. I've never taught anything before. And it's okay. Because nobody has until they have, right? I mean, you know, I don't proclaim by no means to know a whole lot about it. But I've, I've made just enough mistakes myself over time uh, to try to at least help. Um, keep in mind, too, that you're not in this alone. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. But, you know, I told you a minute ago that you're not going to walk away from this with some magic pill about how to be a better Bible class teacher. I hope you'll get a nugget or two, but... I will tell you that individually, if you ever need any help, like putting together some curriculum or getting started with some curriculum on different points, you know, come to us, us, the elders, myself, Aaron, whoever, and we can help you at least point you in the right direction. Um, we know just enough together to help anybody that wants some help with putting together some pointers to get started. So keep that in mind as well. Um, you're going to have to find your own way to teach when you start doing it, whether it's kids, whether it's the Bible class in the back or the auditorium class. You're going to have to find what works for you. Some people are better at being a lecturer, so to speak, and not facilitating a whole lot of questions from the audience. They're just comfortable that way. I think, personally for me, what works is I tend to ask a lot of open-ended questions because I want some feedback. I need that feedback to help us in that class. You have to be a little careful with that at times, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you got to find what works for you. You'll have the material, the subject matter, especially here at Eastside, is going to be provided. You're going to know ahead of time during that quarter what you're going to be teaching, albeit a open-ended subject out in the auditorium or the structured class with the kids and the class in the back. You'll know ahead of time, but still, you're going to have to find that level of comfort that works for you in helping you be the teacher that, you know, you're comfortable being. Um, the ability to ask open-ended questions can be a little nerve-wracking at times because you don't always know what you're going to get back and what somebody's going to come up with, and you have to control that. As the teacher of the class, you gotta you gotta be the facilitator of the class and set it up, and be able to control it in a manner that allows the class to move forward in a structured way, without getting out of hand or off topic. And that's the same whether it's out here or it's kids' class. You are the teacher, and you've got to own that to that extent. Okay, so we talked about the goals. Let's talk about a few key points. Before I continue, has anybody got any thoughts themselves already? Well, that I agree with your assessment of what you teach, you know the information a lot better. Because I taught the middle schoolers once, and, and then there was a technique. You know, we'd go through the Bible, and, he, and somebody would read, and we'd go to the next question, and we'd answer it, we'd talk about it, and we'd kind of get some momentum that way. And there was a couple times I stood in because people were traveling, but my target audience was a bunch of no kidding PhD rocket scientists, right? Right. So I'm applying model and sins to some of the Bible stuff because, you know, nobody can predict what's going to happen. That's just not how it is, except for God. So you got all these PhDs who build these multi million dollar models, and it's still a fancy estimate, and that's all it is. So you got to overcome some of their knowledge because they do know the Bible very, very well. And sometimes I think uh, we try to over analyze it when it, the, the lesson sometimes is pretty simple. 
And that's, I think, what God's intent was. It's simple. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. I, I do agree with that, Dave, a lot. Um, I think, you know, I've, I've said a lot of times, I never have a problem with that myself because I'm a simple person in all seriousness. I mean, the fact that I can take a, you know, a message coming from God, not that I always, it, it takes a lot of time and effort to get proper understanding and application. I don't mean that. But I accept the fact that God said so. And a lot of people, they have a hard time with that. They want to come up with their own angle on, well, I understand that, but that don't apply to here when we get here. You know, I had a, uh, I had a uh, class at a prior group when I would teach. I had a person, rather, one or two that had some interesting opinions. And there was never anything that was necessarily unscriptural. It was just trying to get at an angle that it was unnecessary, in my opinion. So oh, asking open-ended questions in that class, I learned I had to hone that back in. And I had to narrow my, my, my uh, attack angle, if you will, angle of attack, rather, for uh, how I went about asking those questions and, and how I worded them specifically and you know i probably overthought a lot of that and tried to uh, prevent problems before they happened but i think that was what i had to do in that particular class so when you're teaching over time and you get to know people you know you're going to get to you're going to get certain aspects of stuff just like that. And the way that... In trouble, what's that? Sometimes when we, where we get in trouble, we try to explain God's Word yeah. instead of letting God... You know, I, I've talked with people before and they said, but or you're saying that God's... This, I'm just reading what, what God said. We try to over-explain what God's already explained. Right. And... I think we dig ourselves a hole sometimes and instead of asking somebody to say, what does your Bible say here? Right. And you, you figure it out. Right. You know, that's, you know, you're a smart person. Figure out what, what does this, what right. does this mean right here, you know? And, and one of the biggest things was, you, you I think you're the only ones going to heaven. Mm. And, you know, I, I would always refer them to Matthew 7. Mm. And these are who's going to heaven. Not, not my works. This is Jesus' works. Right. Yeah, Matthew 7, 21 through 23 is very sober for all of us. You know. Um, Benji, I think when you pointed out earlier about what, what it's not, right? It's, it's not just learning facts. I think that's one, one of the things that sometimes we fall into. And we've all been in the classes, you know, where you're asked, you've got a book, right? And you ask the question, the answer, and ask the question, the answer, and that. Well, it's learning facts, but that's not learning, right? Learning is the is the is knowing the facts, assimilating the facts, and then application of the facts. Right. Right. Application. Of that the application is huge. So when you say open-ended questions, you're I think what you mean, what I'm taking that you mean by that is you want that individual, the individuals in the class to actually dig a little deeper, think about the application and how that's going to be applied to them. And when you apply, when you get the students to apply those things to them, then there's learning. Correct. And again, that could be the, the little class in the back or any of the classes because everybody's capable of learning from God's Word and applying it to their lives depending on where they're at in their growth you know God is uh, has told us and we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in a second but God has told us you know we're gonna be held accountable by his word so he's not gonna give us something with that being the fact 
that we're not capable of understanding and that we're not capable of applying to our lives. Doing it, it ain't easy, always. But we can't, we're not gonna be able to say we didn't understand it. Um, but getting somebody to think that way and to draw that out of them individually is always a good goal to go by. So that's why, and you're right, that's what I meant when I say, I prefer to ask open-ended questions. It's not just, well, you know, let's let everybody participate. You know, I, I'm not interested in everybody, because everybody learns different. Everybody is at a certain comfort level. But I do feel like it's okay to try to bring that out of them and get them to, uh, get beyond where they're comfortable and, and grow a little bit. And you're not going to do that if you don't apply yourself and, and actually do it. So I think that's part of a teacher's responsibility and uh, methodology that you need to try to go about doing. It's not about just covering a book, like Rick said. You know, it's great to have a book as a guide, but, you know, everybody's different. And I can, uh, you know, my wife's gonna have words to say to me when she realizes that I'm using her so much. However, the way that Leslie teaches is probably way different than the way some of the other teachers teach because Leslie will get the material, the, the uh, Shape of Hearts for God material. And she'll, she'll take that material and just kind of set it over here and then she'll create her own way to go about teaching that particular part of the Bible because that's all it is. It's a section of the Bible that covers a particular topic. But uh, she prefers to go about a different method of teaching instead of just following, you know, one, two, and three of what that material says. Now everybody's not comfortable doing that, and that's okay. You got that's what I mean when I say you got to find your own level of comfort there. As long as the material stays on point, and you're teaching within God's word, that's what matters. So, you know, you've got to find that that uh, that level of comfort for yourself. Um, let's talk about some key points here. Um, yeah, we've talked about this a little bit. The, the focus needs to be on growing the pupils, the students, whatever you want to call them, in your class. You want them to come away from the material from that quarter that you taught just a little bit stronger than they were when you started. I, I, it's common sense, right? But the ultimate goal is to come away from a Bible class being able to take in a little bit of that meat, as we call it, that Paul, or, or I'm sorry, the book of Hebrews talks about in Hebrews 5. You want to come away with a little better understanding that, you know, you can get off, you can get weaned off that milk, if you will. And that, that's a, a, a process, one step at a time. So that should always be what you're looking at. Um, the teacher needs to be on guard, I believe, from personal opinions. What's a personal opinion? And what is a genuine biblical input? And that's where I was talking about sometimes you can get into a little bit of a, a interesting situation when you get too broad with some questions that you might ask about the material because um, you may you may not like what you get thrown back at you and then you got to go like Jay said you got to you find yourself trying to explain what God said when instead of just covering what God said so it, it, it's more of an art than it is a science I believe there's no black and white way to go about teaching right and so that's why I say, be comfortable with whatever way that you are comfortable teaching. Find that level of comfort and teach that way. As long as we're sticking to God's Word and we're teaching the material that's to be covered for that quarter and we're staying in God's Word, 
you know, find that flow that works for you. It's okay to not, everybody doesn't have to teach the exact same way. Um, again, the Bible is always relevant. I don't care how old you are. You know, the little kids class in the back. The biblical uh, history class in the back and the auditorium out here. It's, we're all teaching the Bible and it's all relevant. And you're capable of understanding, depending on where you're at, you're capable of understanding and letting it work in you to grow as a Christian. So, you know, don't be too caught up in trying to bring a bunch of extra stuff. Um, Extra exhibits and material, there is a place for it, but you know, you just got to be a little careful, is what I'll say about that. Um, sometimes, you know, you can bring stuff that, that helps. Uh, we talk a lot in the back about the, the history of the Bible and, bro and broken down into periods of history, and you know, it's good to have. Uh, you know, a map or a chart sometimes to help break that down that's always there that you can point to and go to depending on where we're at. Because we go back there in the back, we're going to go from Genesis through Revelation over a two-year period. So you're going to have those broke down into periods, and there's charts that help with that. Uh, sometimes a video might help enhance the material that you're absolutely fixing to talk about. Yeah, Aaron's videos are pretty telling because then you have a, a place you can see and kind of sense with never being there to go with that word. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, there, there, are, there, there are ways to go about enhancing your class with that type of stuff. I would just, you know, caution you about making sure that what you're presenting in that way is relevant to exactly where you're at and what you're teaching. Because you don't want to cause that distraction. And you got to make sure that it's relevant to the Scripture and not somebody's opinion that they put together to help explain that in a way. Let God's Word be God's Word. Um, use some extra stuff to enhance your your class, but you got to be comfortable with that. It's not a matter of putting on a video to kill some time. That's never a purpose. It shouldn't be. It, it, it's going to set people's mindset for something that you're about to discuss, and that's you know certainly a good prerogative to to, to have, but. You know, just don't lean on that crutch too much is all I would say. Some people are visual learners. They are. And so when you can use, utilize visual aids in the right way, right, it can help imprint the word on somebody's brain. And I, that's not my idea that God did that, right? He, right. He sent visions. He sent, he did, you know, Jesus did different things to, impress upon the minds of those that he was teaching right yeah you're absolutely right we we learn in different ways some are visual some it doesn't they don't they don't require as much but we uh we have to find that that works that as long as we stick to where we're at and it helps the class that is that that's what matters um but in john 12 Verses 47 and 48, John 12, 47, 48 says, And if anyone hears my words and do not believe, I do not judge him. <clears throat> For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. goes back to what Jay was saying. You'll have people that will question you about different things and they try to get you with that gotcha question and you know when you are able to show somebody in god's word exactly what not what i said it doesn't matter what my opinion is doesn't matter 
all that matters is what God said, and then they don't accept that, and they try to twist it again. That's on them. You have done what you can do. And that's hard for us sometimes because, you know, we just want them to understand. We want them to listen because we're trying to teach them. Not everybody wants to be taught. Not everybody wants to accept God's Word. Some and you got to understand that. Some people see it as a confrontation rather than a, a concern. Right. They'll tell you, and I've had this come up very recently, they'll tell you, I'm not trying to argue with you, as they're arguing with you, right? Um, you know, people will, uh, they'll, they'll turn it and twist it and just try to, you know, find their own way. But my point to all that and what Jesus said here is it's key to understand that we're not going to be equipped to handle those particular conversations and to enhance and spread God's Word if our knowledge and understanding ourselves is not where it needs to be. And a lot of that can come by studying. Um, you know, PG, I think one of the things we have to keep in our mind too Jesus, the master teacher, they even the Pharisees wouldn't wouldn't listen to him. So we, you know, we're not going to be able to teach everybody. No, we're not because they they won't they won't accept it or, or don't want to accept it. Right. At least not at that time. Right. So you know, we have to do what we can where we can and. Right. Not, not get discouraged about it and say, well, right. this ain't working out. I, I just, I quit. And I can tell you that from a teach, from a, a viewpoint from teaching a class, it's easy to get frustrated sometimes when even in here, even in the building, where you got all this material prepared, you present it, you think everything went well, and then you ask a question and you get nothing. Right? I'm not, I'm not being critical of anybody. I'm just telling you from a teacher's perspective, don't let that frustrate you. Because it will. You will put all this stuff together and you, you go about trying to get it across in a manner that you feel like will be for the best edification of everybody. And that's what you're thinking. You, you, we tend to think a lot of ourselves sometimes about how we do things. And you just need to present God's Word the best that you possibly can and let it do its work. Not everybody is going to respond the way, in a manner that you have it in your mind that it's not about... Uh, I don't want to say this. It's not about us as teachers being reinforced that we're doing a great job. That ain't what we're that ain't what we're up here to do. We're up here to teach God's word. Period. That's why I say everybody should teach. Everybody. Everybody can teach. Well, we're all called to spread the word, so Yeah. It reminds me when you said that about people not answering questions that are asked, right? I think you have to flip that around. Just why don't if I'm teaching and I ask a question, nobody answers. If I'm sitting, in, if I reverse the role and say, if I'm sitting in the pew, why wouldn't I answer that question? There's a lot of reasons we don't answer questions that a teacher asks. One is that's so simple. What if I get it wrong? <laughs> that's really that's right. embarrassing, right? That's right. If I get it wrong, or you know, it's like, well, I don't know exactly where he's coming from, so I don't answer the question. Or I'm going to let somebody else answer that question, right? There's a lot of those reasons that we have to remember about why we wouldn't answer that question sitting in the audience. Right, right. And that's why I say don't let it, don't, don't, don't let it frustrate you. Don't use that as a gauge, so to speak. Mark? Some people, too, uh, take long to process. I hear you teach a class today on Sunday. I'm still on that class Thursday. You know, it takes longer to process and to get through it. Right. You know, a lot of people don't. Quick, uh, quick thinkers are 
think quick or answer a question quick. So right. You know, right. That going on too. Uh, you see that. You see that. Yeah, and I think Rick brought up a good point too. I think it is people are a little hesitant about, well, you know, is this going to be wrong? You know, but it's hard to get in the mind of a teacher sometimes, right? And uh, we got to understand that from just think about that from a teaching perspective, though, is my point with that. Don't let that be your guide. Because I can tell you, I've taught classes in the past where I had people that, I mean, very, you'd have like one or two, and it, nobody else would say anything, nobody else would say anything, and then all of a sudden you'd have this person who hadn't spoke up all quarter come up with one of the more interesting dynamic points that you didn't, I didn't even think about. I'm like, where did that come from? You know, where have you been, right? So you don't ever know what's getting across to people, how they're processing it, right? Because we do, we all process stuff differently. We process stuff faster, slower. Um, we, we think about it at a different level because we're all different people. And we're all at a different level of our walk with Christ. I so, really want a good example. Uh, I learned <clears throat> I, have to, I have to write down notes. You know, I, I will quote, uh, I'll have to write down quotes, try to keep up with PowerPoints. Uh, and then Jake, he'll be sitting, and sometimes, you know, he, he'll be looking, looking around, he's like, son, did you not miss? And he will quote word for word everything that was said. And I guess it's just me because he don't process the way I do. Right. He, he had to get that from Lana or somebody. <laughs> I don't have that trait. Right. I have to I have to write down stuff and I have to go back and study it. And all all through high school, he could go over something one time and he got it. Yeah. His hard drive's not full. And I just I, I can't do that. And it, it frustrates me because I can't do it. Right. Right. But it's I don't know. I wish I had that trait. Yeah. I wish I could claim it. Yeah, we all learn differently. And, uh, you know, my point with that is keep that in mind when you are teaching. You know, like, and again, whether it's this class, that class, or the kids' class, not every student that you have that are sitting there are going to learn the same way. And uh, some of them will frustrate you if you're not, if you'll let them. And some mm -hmm. of them, you got you to pull them into the participation room. Yeah. Because they're quiet, they're not going to say it, and they know this. This guy over here is going to answer no matter what. Right. And so sometimes I try to get that guy to help me teach and keep him busy in a leadership role instead of dominating every conversation. That's right. That's Only right. Ten kids, but it was like, yeah. How do I tie that up? <laughs> that is a you. You run across that, Dave. Regardless of which class you're teaching, you'll have one person, sometimes two, that if you'll let them, will answer everything. And then, you know, you just have to find a way to, you know, just, just try to enhance the participation level with the others. Um, very simple, but study, study, and study the section of the Bible that you're going to teach. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been preparing for a class and I'll know what's going to be covered, obviously, because I'm going to be the one teaching it. And I'll get sidetracked when I'm trying to study because some other interesting point will come up and then I'll just woo, squirrel. I'm gone. I'm over here. And then I forget, you know, what, what, how did I get there? And what am I teaching now? And bring it back. So the... Total knowledge of the Bible, yes, you gotta have it. And you gotta have the flow, especially when you're teaching the history class in the back, you've got to know how what you're teaching is tied into the 30,000 foot view of the Bible. You gotta always keep that in mind. But stay focused on preparing what you're going to present that day. Because if you don't, you'll get sidetracked and 
the message that you're trying to convey when you're teaching will not come across quite the way that you think it might. So, you know, it sounds simple, but again, you know, study the material and the section of the Bible that you're going to teach that particular day. Um, if I'm assuming everybody in here has taught a Bible class, I know y'all have, at some point, you will grow as a teacher far beyond anything you'll ever do as a student or as a uh, uh, sitting in a pew, if you will, because you've got to be able to be prepared to answer questions that you don't know what might come at you. Um, you got to be able to study far beyond the amount of the material that you're particularly looking at in order to be able to be prepared to answer what comes up. Um, that's how I feel about it. Now, like I said, you've got to stay focused and you cannot plan for every single thing that might come up that you try to uh, be prepared for. And you can't answer them all either, so sometimes you gotta say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. That's exactly right. And then always get back to them. Yeah. Yeah, especially, especially in the adult class, there may be somebody, and I, I, I think the man that sits right here, call, that may have the answer that you don't know. 100%. And uh, you got to you got to be willing to say do you have what 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 do you think on this and, and you will get he can open your eyes, you know. A lot sure. of people are like that. Sure. They they may know more about that particular topic. Yeah, the first point that I had on the slide was, you know, we learn a lot from each other. Absolutely. And and that that's sitting here this morning. But that's sitting in about any Bible class you're in. I mean, you can have a certain amount of material that you know is going to be covered, and you go home and study. And I'm talking about sitting in a pew, but you don't learn that way as much near as you do coming and sitting and seeing the the participation. Even if you don't personally participate, just seeing the 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 interaction and what's being brought out from others that will help you grow yourself far beyond just taking the material and sitting down at home and studying. Um, that was the other point I was gonna make about getting frustrated with people not answering your questions about stuff, right? Um, you're gonna, people are gonna grow with the material that you put together. I don't care what it is, but sometimes they won't study it at home. Sometimes you'll get that where they just, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in class, I'll learn at the end, and that'll frustrate you. But, you know, you can't control that. What you can control is what you put together and how you go about presenting it. That, that's it. So don't let that frustrate you. Um, teaching is a learned and perishable skill. You're only going to get better teaching by teaching. You can't go to a class and learn how to teach, but then not teach and think that, well, I got this, I'm going to be a really good teacher, I can do this and that. You got to teach. You got to teach to, to get better at teaching. And if you don't teach periodically, where whatever level you got to as a teacher at being a uh, comfort level and finding what works best for you you're going to lose because each class you teach you're going to have different people and you're going to have different opinions and you're going to have different ways to go about enhancing your targeted audience and if you don't use it you're going to lose it that's for sure um the art of listening right um, we can get caught up in the material that we prepared and we want to just get it out there. But somebody along the way may come up with a really good question or a really good point. You've got to be able to humble yourself as a teacher, I think, and just slow your roll and listen to what they're saying 
and refocus that and go that direction. The art of listening is not about just letting somebody finish so you, you can just go right about doing what you were doing. It takes an effort to listen to what they're saying and think through how that's going to apply to the material that you've presented and how you want to go with it. But always be thinking about when you're getting ready to teach a class that if you're, you know, you can't expect that participation and then shut it down when you get it and think it's going to be better. So remember, the class, the goal is not to get through what you got in your book. It's not to get through your notes. It's to help everybody grow and to help everybody as best you can to facilitate a growth in their walk with God. And if that is brought on by Mr. Claude having a point that we need to just, maybe it redirects the entire class and we end up getting through two verses that day instead of the whole chapter, that's okay. You can always go back to it. You can start again. You don't have to just finish everything because that's what you got up here. So, you know, just, just keep that in mind as well. Um, we talked about this. You'll eventually settle on a method that works for you. Um, you just got to find what that is. Hebrews 5, verses 12 through 14, right here, is relevant to what we're talking about. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now we use that a lot of times, I, I believe, in talking about people who are the, uh, the, the, the pew holders, if you will. The, they're always here. They're sitting in their particular spot in the pew, but they don't participate in anything. They're just in neutral, right? That's where we usually go to this. Um, but I would challenge you today and think about that from a viewpoint of you are a Christian. You have grown you, from where you started and you have matured in your walk. But are you teaching others God's Word? Are you spreading that gospel? Not everybody's meant to come up here and teach class. I'm not saying that if you're not teaching a class, you're not, uh, you, you still need milk. So don't misunderstand me. But are you teaching your kids? Are you teaching your neighbors? Are you, teach, are you teaching somebody? Are you spreading God's Word as best that you can? So I would challenge you to think about that um, and look at it from that perspective. Look at that particular passage from that perspective. And if you've got a little bit of a, a want to to teach class around, you know, in, a, in our group, in any group, you know, I would encourage you to let this uh, enhance that fire that you've got and challenge yourselves. You know, you're not going to grow beyond where you're at if you don't push yourself to something. So just think about that as well. Um, obviously, nothing new under the sun. We talk about this in a lot of perspectives. You're not gonna all of a sudden teach a class and you're gonna come up with some nugget that's never been thought of before. Now you might present it in a way that maybe gets through to somebody in a different manner because of the way that you go about doing it, but you're not gonna come up with anything new. Don't let that pressure you from being from teaching because you think you gotta be, you know, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Johnny teacher that ain't never, you know, ain't never been anybody as, as good as you. You're not going to be that way, right? Um, you know, Jude 3, God provided us with his word once and for all, right? So why don't we just stick with God's word when we're teaching? It, 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 we're not going to discover something new that is going to enhance, we're not going to be able to help God spread His Word. 
we will spread his word. He has us to do that, but we can't come up with our own creation that's beyond his word that's going to enhance it. Let God's work do the will. I mean, let God's word do the work. Um, you know, God created us in a way that helps us to understand his plan of salvation. First uh, Timothy 2 and verse 4. We're capable of understanding God's Word and what the will is from that. As we grow, we come to understand that application. So focus on teaching God's Word and let that be enough. Um, again, outside studies can be helpful. Um, think about what that is, though. We tend to want to go to commentaries. Some are okay. Some are better than others. Some have a certain point depending on where you're at, but don't depend on another man to help you guide God's Word. Go to God's Word. Sometimes those are helpful. Um, I know especially in the, the history class, uh, I depend on Rick a lot to look up the... Uh, the original words, uh, the original Greek word or the original uh, Hebrew word, depending on where we're at, because it'll enhance and bring out a point that we're making about the discussion that we're on. And that's great. Uh, that type stuff is really good, but don't let it, don't, don't depend on a man to come up with an opinion to help you is the point that I'm making there. Um, we talked about this in the beginning. The focus of how do we judge a class, I believe, how are we doing, is being able to focus the individual application that those sitting in the class can take away from what you're covering. How does this apply to my life today? And that can usually be an interesting concept, especially in the Old Testament. And that's what I love about the Old Testament is so rich that stuff that happened thousands of years ago has exact same application to us today in our walk with God today. You can't always get there easy, but there's usually a message for us. It, it was provided for us for our understanding and our learning. So always think about how that application can come across with those that you're teaching. Um, but again, nothing new under the sun. It happened then, it's happening now. The same sins that you see David struggled with back then, we're struggling with today. And, you know, the point, you understand the point that I'm making. But focus as a teacher on in trying to make sure that those that you're teaching can make personal applications to their own lives. And I believe that will help you enhance the class that you're teaching. Um, this is a good section right here it's okay to be nervous if you've never been nervous teaching a class you don't need to be teaching a class not not here um, the ability to teach a class when you're teaching god's word it all scare you it should humble you significantly i think it should absolutely humble you um james 3 in verse 1 says, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Now, that's pretty broad, but yeah. It, it, uh, it ought to get your attention to that extent. A healthy dose of personal responsibility of not committing error while you're teaching should always occur to you. Are you going to make errors when you're teaching? Yes, you are. Just understand that is, you know, don't let that scare you. 
in the way that you know you're not doing it intentionally i should hope but again if you're doing it intentionally you don't need to be teaching and that's why we got elders to make sure that the el that the material being taught is taught in a way that is focused on the truth and not error so do you guys throw a flag when you see a penalty that's right that's right um, so in Deuteronomy chapter 4 Deuteronomy chapter 4 God said it another way I get to it right quick a new Bible and it wants to stick so Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2 says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I commanded you. We're not to add to it. We're not to take away from it. And that is something that as a teacher, you have always got to stay focused on. I don't care who you're teaching. I don't care if it's your neighbor. I don't care if it's your, your family especially not in here um you know i know that's something that i go to in prayer myself constantly when i know i'm about to teach a class or i know i'm about to teach anyone is you know help me adhere to your word don't you know help me not to add to it or take away from it we can get caught up in that sometimes and we can get a little off subject. We tend to want to stray down the path of, you know, just look at what I mean, you know, let me, let me tell you what I know. You can't do that. You gotta focus on God's word and let God's word do the talking and not you. Don't let your opinion stray from God's word. It, it can be hard. I know I've, I've told this story numerous times, but when I was first converted, you know, Leslie's granddad taught me, and he is as patient a man as I've ever known because I was full of myself and full of my own opinions, and it somewhat narrowly involved the Bible. It's just what I knew growing up but it was traditions, it was this, it was that. But he would always teach me directly from God's Word. His explanation as to why we could not do something or why we did something, that authority that we speak about that God has given us and not given us, he was an expert at it. I mean, he really was. And he would just strictly stay with that. And he would even tell me, if you can show me what your opinion is in God's Word, you show me in God's Word where that's so, maybe I'm wrong. You can teach me. And of course, I could. And after a while, the truth will wear you down if your heart's in the right place and you're trying to learn. I, I, I can't say mine always was, unfortunately, back then especially. But when I came around and I began to understand that you know, I was an idiot to begin with. And you start trying to focus on the truth, it'll humble you. It'll humble you like you've never been humbled in your life. When you start to think about all the error that has been thrown at you and that you have helped spread even, you know, you got to stay focused on God's Word. And I can't say that enough. Let that do your teaching. Don't get caught up in material. Don't get caught up in uh, deflections just to get through an hour of class. You know, I've, I've been sitting here talking about all this. We've already gone over what I intended to talk about. But I don't care. We're going to keep going. And we'll get through it. But that can be your mindset when you're teaching a class sometimes you you'll, you'll start racing through stuff because you see that clock just tick 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 but you focus on god's word 
It'll take as long as it takes. Um, let that nervousness, like I said, drive you, help you, move you to study the Word better. Study the Word more. Get more and more comfortable with what you're going to teach. Let that nervousness drive you in that manner and not take away from what you're uh, prepared to talk about. Um, again, this is we're rehashing. Let God's Word speak for itself. God gave us the ability to teach, but it is definitely a perishable skill set. We talked about this, but let's look at that. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Now, we can take that and apply it to our teaching, right? Let the power of what you're teaching come from God's Word and not yourself. Humble yourself, get out of the way of God's Word, just present God's Word and let that be the power. God's Word is very powerful. You know, we spoke earlier, you know, Jay brought up about the ultimate teacher being Jesus. And that's absolutely right. And how did Jesus go about teaching everybody? That's what He was here to do, right? Look in John chapter 12, verses 49 and 50. He says, For I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that His command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. What better example do we have than that? You know, let God's Word be the focus. And it is absolutely powerful and will help you. There's the last point that I made about that, that Jay brought up. There's no greater teacher than Jesus that we've ever known. And how did he teach? Well, you know, he simply taught God's Word. His teaching style was simple, direct, profound, and penetrating, I believe. I mean, he spoke the truth. That's all he spoke. He didn't let what others thought about it or try to trick him, get, get him caught up. He taught God's Word, and that's what we're commanded to do. So just let God's Word do the work for you. Um, and finally, just some nuggets. So you are the teacher. You have to set the tone for the class. Um, you have to make sure that you do get started on the material and not let everybody just go off track with you a little bit. You got to set that tone. And that's regardless of the age of the class. And it's right here where, you know, I wanted to mention to the men, it's okay to teach a little kid's class every now and then. Um, you know, I tend on trying to do that next year. Schedule for this year is already out. But it's okay for a man to teach a little kid's class. And I say that somewhat in jest, but very true. Sometimes the little kids will respond to a man in a different way than they will a female. And we always seem to think, well, that's the women's class. You know, let the women have the little kids. Because they can't teach the, the actual uh, saved Christians that are up here get that that's great but that does not mean that a man can't occasionally teach a little kid's class so just think about that because I do think that would help every now and then to throw that little wrinkle at the kids it'll help and it, I, I guarantee you it'll help you also grow if you don't think you'll grow teaching a little kid's class 
I'm telling you, you will. Because you have to think about how you go about teaching regardless of who you're teaching. It's the same methods, but different. <laughs> it's different. But that sometimes will help the kids, especially if you have, I don't know, some strong-minded kids from time to time that want to do their own thing. They just, they're just naturally going to behave a little bit different when you got a man back there. And sometimes they can help the kids grow a little bit. So don't be scared to go back there and jump in a kid's class. Um, yeah, always remember that what we're, everything that we're talking about, souls are at stake when you're teaching class. Uh, and to Dave's point earlier, don't ever hesitate to answer a question that you don't know, simply you don't know, but you will find out. And you'll follow up. Just be sure to always follow up. Don't leave it hanging. Um, you're not in this alone. The elders and deacons and seasoned Christians, such as Claude, you know, they're always here for help and support. And, you know, utilize that to your advantage. So this is what we're planning. The classes are broke down into three categories moving forward. We got the auditorium, we got for what I'm calling the, the Bible periodic studies. It's the history class in the back. We've got the children classes. Each class is unique, but maintains the same goals in the direction of learning and growing. Ideally, the kids start, you move to the, the history in the back to get a lot more enhanced Bible history, and then eventually out to the auditorium. You know, it's designed to where we're all focused on the same message, just at a different level. Um, already covered that. So, in the auditorium, man, could I have made that any smaller? Uh, See, so one year plan in the auditorium class is going to be focused on the theme that the elders present for the year, like this year. It's Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. We've got that broke down, Aaron did, into three different topics because we just started this, so we're only going to have three quarters this year. So from a April to June, Aaron is going to teach about the uh, uh, man, my mind just went blank. I'm not the only one. Yeah, right, right. Um, it'll come to me in a second. Sorry, Aaron. It'll come to me in a second. Uh, over the course of the one year, the classes will be taught in, in they're going to be broke down into quarters, basically, regardless of which class you're talking about. Um, back in the back, the difference there is it's focused on a two-year cycle of 17 periods of biblical history. It breaks the Bible down using a guide from Brother Bob Waldron that we're going to start in Genesis and go all the way through Revelation over a two-year plan. Evidences. Aaron is teaching evidences April through June. Then I'm teaching July, August, and September on faith, just broad faith. And then Aaron is finishing up the year with assurances. And Rick, I've already got you pinned for January, February, and March. Don't know what yet because it's going to depend on what the elders said is the theme. So that's how that will rotate. Um, the 17 periods of biblical history, again, they start in Genesis, go all the way through Revelation. It's broke down into different periods of time. Um, too much to go into right now. If you want to learn more about that, you know, the class is back there. And it starts with Mark, April 7th on creation. Um, then you got the children's classes. They're on a three-year cycle of material. That's simply because the 
shaping hearts for God material is broke down into 12 sections. So you do the math, that takes you three years doing it one quarter a section to get through. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, the classes will have a primary and a, a designated secondary teacher. Uh, somebody, will, you'll know who your backup is if you got something that pops up and you can't make it. Um, and then the idea at the end of the time frame, albeit one year, two year, three year, depending on which class, is we simply start over and we do it again and we do it again. So it, it, it's very well organized that way. You'll know from now on what the topic is going to be, with the exception of the one year in the assembly, and that's always going to be based upon the theme that the elders set for that particular year. So that's all I got. Um, any questions or thoughts as we finish up? I start with April this year. <laughs> oh yes, buddy. <laughs> as in, like two weeks. It's yours. Oh, he knows. Trust me, we all know it. Yeah, <laughs> I told Aaron yesterday we were talking about it, and I said I just, you know, he he's, he said I can't wait to start the evidences, and I said oh I can't wait to just sit there and listen to you. <laughs> I had a couple of thoughts as you was going through that. Yes, sir. You know, just relying on my background and you know the things that I've learned over the years, but you know one of the things that I had to come to grips with trying to teach a class is I'm not the smartest guy in the room and I'll never be the smartest guy in the room, right? Um, and so I always feared that question. You know, somebody asks a question I don't know the answer to as a teacher. Well, you don't have to know all the answers. No, you don't. You know, one, of the, one of the methods that I started using was um, and I use this whether I think I know the answer to the question or not is, so what does the class think about that question? Somebody help me answer that question. Because yeah, you just right? employed 30 other people to try to solve the problem. Yeah, and so we, you know, assuming it's relevant to the topic. Sometimes you get questions that are like, all right, so where are you coming from with that question? How's that, right. How does that apply to this class at all? Right. Right. Um, um, but, but that has helped me over the years not be as intimidated by the PhDs in the class, you know, that, you know, right. they, they're, they're, and, and the other thing is, Jesus ne didn't answer all the questions he was asked. No. When he was teaching. And so sometimes, you, you know, you can say, well, that's a good question. Let's, let's take that offline. You know, if it's not relevant to the class, right. if it's, if it's, you know, something that's in left field, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, and I did. refer to that as the parking lot answer, yeah. you know, because I've done that several times, not here, previous, yeah. where it's like, let's finish that conversation at break. And, and no matter how much we study and how many notes we take, there'll always be a point, or a lot of times there'll be a point by somebody in the audience that's like, why didn't I think of that? that? It never crossed my mind. Why didn't I think of that? Right. That's a great point. Right. And then you can, you know, it just enhances the class when, when individuals do that. Absolutely. Right? It does. Uh, and you can't cover every passage related to that, to what topic you're trying to teach. And inevitably somebody will say, well, what about passage so-and-so? It's like, yeah, that's a good passage too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but you yeah. can't cover everything. Right. You're just not going to be able to do that. Um, Another thing, you mentioned methods, you know, there's different methods of how to do that. I, I think about, I think about the TV shows that we've all seen where you've got this teacher that's been put into a very difficult school and students that are unruly, unruly or Disrupted. don't want to learn and, and you have the, you know, and, and that teacher is passionate about what they want to teach and they're trying to get across to the students and finally she figures out or he figures out a method that pulls them in. Right. right? And I, I think of that as I'm 
trying to teach a class when you have, uh, you know, particularly where, you know, we're a we're small group here, but at Gooch Lane, where I learned a lot of different methods there, you know, you had 7, 10, 15 in each class and they grew up and you'd have, you'd see different class, different personalities in those classes. And some of them were engaging and some of them were just not, you know, the whole class. Right? right, you might have one, but it's like, you know, I can't tell if you're getting anything out of this class. Right, right? and you and you try to work to figure out what is that method that's going to work for them and you as a teacher. But how am I get? How can I get across to you and using different methods, fo still focusing on the Bible and don't don't s stray from that at all. But right, but it may be, you know, I've used things like Jeopardy, you know creating some method and, and get them or competitions that can be dangerous <laughs> competitions I know you do do that in the Bible lab sometimes you have a comp have a competition and you can get more engagement that way um, but there's you, just you a lot need of different class methods. outside too sometimes that's helpful if the weather's good so just to get them out of a chair so when we I'll tell you a story quick quick story because I know we're running out of time we went to Rose Hill, Virginia. I mentioned that before to some of you. A small group up there and took a bunch of us up there to have a singing, but we, the women would take the, some of the classes and the men would take some of the classes. Uh, of course, it was very few, so it, but there was not enough space for the classes. So one of the ladies that we took up there took the, lady, the, the young girls, teenage girls. There was three or four teenage girls. And they didn't have a place to meet, so she sat in the back of the pickup truck. And uh, that works when it's not raining outside. Right, right. But, um, but very good. You can have a good class anywhere. Right. So. Absolutely. No, it's good thoughts. Um, anybody else? The, Lord. The thing that got me the most, and this is when we went to a larger congregation where we were team teaching because we had a lot of little kids. And it was my son that was doing it because, Jay, he didn't take notes and he didn't look at the teacher. I wanted him to look at me when I was teaching. <laughs> and he's all over the room and everything. And I was telling the other lady, who was an older lady and was teaching me how to teach, said, this drives me crazy. He is not listening at all. And she's like, why do you think he's not listening? Because he never looks at me when I'm teaching. He's all over the room. And she's like, he's answering every question. He's obviously listening. And she pointed out that, you know, that some people take notes, but some people draw pictures. She said, I am sitting there scribbling the whole time I'm listening because my hands have to be busy. But that's very hard for me as a teacher. But if y'all go to the little kids' class, be ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 hope, I suppose he's doing an adult, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you another thing that I learned in my work experience. There was a there's a PhD at work and I would be briefing something you know and and he'd sit there like this and he and, and every now and then he'd go and what what is wrong what did I just say <laughs> he'd shake his head no and at, one day I finally asked him I said why do you sit there and shake your head no he said oh I'm just thinking. That wasn't a no. That's, that's, I mean, that's, just, that's just the way I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting there thinking. <laughs> it's like, you're telling me no. I'm glad you asked me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So, so don't be intimidated by body language in an audience either. Right? That was, that's the lesson that I learned from that. It's like, you know, if somebody looks like they're not getting it or they're questioning what you're at, maybe you ask them on the side or something. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, it never hurts to go, and you may, you may not always uh, like what you hear, but right. it's always good to go ask somebody. Look, I saw this. Did I say something that offended you? Did I? Did I? Was, was I in error? Can you help me with? You know, and if you got somebody that's being honest with you, maybe they caught something that, you know, or maybe it's just absolutely nothing. You know. Um, I think I'm gonna run by Home Depot and get the materials to build me a sandbox. But Jesus drawn in the sand when he went and answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. They ain't going one occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take that to the kids. <laughs> I'm scared to say this because I'll be sitting in these classes, but when I have learned the most, we had a preacher that would give you tests. He would teach them, <laughs> and at the end of the quarter, he would give a test, and I can tell you, we studied. Don't well, cows, we, we took those notes to the barn and we studied. <laughs> yeah, we talked about, you know, not everybody learns the same, yeah. you know. <laughs> Some people are... Because I'm lazy. <laughs> well, you, you know. I need some pressure. <laughs> well, that's, I don't know if I can do it now. That's why I have to take notes. Because I can't, I, my long-term memory. Right. Like, you know, <coughs> that semester test. Right. I would ace them all the way up every... And then when they give the semester test, if I'd lost my notes, right? You know, it was. Yeah, sometimes you, when you're teaching and you see somebody back there scribbling, <clears throat> in, in your mind you're thinking, ah, shouldn't be. Is he, is he is he making notes about something I messed up on? Because I can't see where you'd be taking notes in this. That that's the way your mind works when you're up here teaching. You can look into the body language and come up with all kind of things. And you, and you try to be relaxed up there, but yeah. I went to some army classes where, you know, every day we start with somebody doing a weather report for five minutes. No <laughs> guidance, you got five minutes to be done. Right. And then the people in the back would be counting how many times you said, um, or you did yeah. something that was not okay. And then people are all they'd over say, hey, And they give you a critique, hey, here's what you're doing. You probably don't know you're doing it. or. Did you know you're a podium magnet? You're not tall enough to be seen? Yes, I love high magnet. <laughs> right? But they right. give you what's going on so you can try to be better to the audience or make eye contact or yeah. hit somebody with a question or yeah. try to get you relaxed up there even though you're never going to be relaxed. Right. Yeah, quick, quick story and then we'll get out of here. But uh, I, I used to go around a lot. I went all over the southeast actually the last 10 years that I worked. And I'd participate in hiring boards. And when you had promotional hiring boards, they would call in the outside entities to do all the testing. And that required people to do the scoring. You had sheets that you scored and you had to present all that. And they would do what they wanted to with their scores. However, the one thing that you, you have to go through a training class. I don't care if you've done them a hundred times. You have to sign off on a training class for you about how to act as a board uh, facilitator. And they, you know, they, they, they get on you about, look, don't do anything that's distracting. You know, just, you're gonna score. And a lot of times I found I couldn't make a whole lot of eye contact. I'd glance up to see if they were making eye contact from time to time, because that was, part of the scoring, but I tried to just not do anything because I had a, a good friend of mine that he was the chief of police with uh, the city of Albany school system, Darty County, Georgia school system. Been chief of police there forever. But he told me a story one night when we were just getting to know each other about, you know, he had tried to be chief a few times and he was on this one particular, uh, he was in front of this one panel, and there was this one particular person, and it's, that had been 20 years prior. But I say he never forgot this, because whatever the question was, doesn't matter, he couldn't, you know, I can't remember what he said it was, but he said, you know, he knew that he didn't know the answer, but he was kind of rambling, just trying to get somewhat close and just do the best he could, you know? I mean, this guy was really short, but he was, he, he literally said, he, he said he looked up and he saw this one guy go, literally tossed his pen and just was like, made this huge expression like that, right? So that always stuck with me when I'm thinking, you know, when I'm up here teaching, just, uh, you know, you, you, that's the other thing is you will get comfortable with a focus level and try to move around to others. And, but I can tell you right now, I look at my wife more than I do anything when I'm up here, whether I'm preaching, teaching, because, you know, you'll get a little subtle, but we've known each other 30 years. You know, David, she won't do this, but she'll be like, mm, you know, something like that. Like, it's about time to wrap this up. Or, you know, she'll, 
you know, you when when you're teaching, you got to focus on something, and you're going to find that level of comfort with somebody that you're going to connect with. But always remember, you need to try to look around and keep everybody engaged. So, just one final thought. Yeah, I, I got one more thing. <laughs> like, that's one of my peas. People dig their own hole. They get up there and dig their own hole. Hey, I didn't have time to look at this. I'm not confident. I'm not your normal teacher. Nobody knows that. Right. Just stand up there. Because in the Army, sometimes we get forth. Hey, I know you haven't seen this brief, but you're briefing the CG in 10 minutes. What? <laughs> and there's four slides. Good luck. Right. And just part of a shredding way to get you comfortable up there. And to be confident, don't dig your own hole. Don't tell them everything they don't need to know. Very good point. Because they won't know. Very good point. Maybe uh -huh. two people in the room know. The rest of them don't need to know. Right. If I had a flat tire, there's a flood. It's not my fault. I'm not prepared. That's a good point. And that's a point that when I put this together, I should have put it there. And I didn't think about that. But you're right. Everybody's not going to know you. You know? You may have visitors. And... They don't want to walk into a class and realize that you're a hot mess, you ain't never taught before, and <laughs> you're scared to death, and you know, this is why I'm gonna, you're gonna get what you expect, right? So, own it, you know? Be Whether confident. you're comfortable or not, do your best to be comfortable, make yourself comfortable. And, uh, you know, as the class goes, you'll, you'll settle down. Um, but anyway, you didn't put it far enough forward so when you faint that you don't get the head. <laughs> well, that is a point, Jay. I appreciate that. But, uh, that just from the first time I ever spoke. Yeah. Yeah. I almost went down. <laughs> Locked my legs. And I almost went down. Yeah. Bow with me, if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity we've had this morning to open your word and to study from it and to have this time together as like-minded Christians to work through this process of teaching your word, Father. And I pray that we each were able to take something away from this and be able to help others to also know that they can be comfortable in teaching and spreading your word as you would have us do that, Father. Help us all find that way to make that proper application to our lives, to help us grow and help us be better servants of yours as you would have us be. We thank you for this time, Father. We pray that you be with each one of us as we depart from this place. And we thank you so much for Jesus, Father. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.